Steve now coming to you live from atop the Lavender Town Radio Tower. It's the one, the only, Puckle Podcast. And welcome to the 440th episode of the Puckle Podcast. I am your host, Trainer Thatch, here today with my recondite co-host. Uh, we Some have, say... It's Lord Jushiro. <laughs> 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 uh, and then we, of course, today also have, uh, we also have the recondite, actually not recondite. I looked up the, I looked up the definition after I did the random gen- uh, adjective generator. It means uh, a subject of knowledge, little known, abstruse. Which is not true at all of either of these people. Uh, but we have our Sigma. Hello. It says you're obscure. That's not true. I don't think that's true. Uh, but yes, <laughs> uh, welcome to the Puckle Podcast. Puckle, of course, standing for the Pokemon Underground Champions League, a nonsensical name I came up with in my bedroom in 2007. It might have actually been in a school cafeteria. I don't remember. The lore changes. The Lord changes yeah. so slightly. That s- so, so happens slightly. with mythical stories. <laughs> we talk everything here, Pokemon, from the trading card game to the video game to everything in between. I don't even like I Mystery Dungeon. There we go. Mystery <laughs> Dungeon's in between. That, that's a topic today, sure. That's kind of a little bit, yeah. Right. Uh, we, it, it's a slight topic. Today. We, yeah, it, it, it's we'll, interesting. we'll chat about it. This is like two topics <laughs> today. Today's got like two topics. Uh, but it, it, it's interesting. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Welcome to the show. If you're new, welcome back. If you're old, I'm excited to talk some Pokemon today and get you guys another exciting episode in these totally normal times. Uh, so, uh, what have you guys been up to lately? So, uh, not much. Uh, lots of work going around, but uh, still surviving this um pandemic, and uh, still excited for the DLC to drop. Waiting on that very um thing to happen so other than that it's been pretty well honestly that's good yeah i know that's that's really good what about you sigma i know you've been doing some stuff uh yeah so i've hit master ball in doubles twice since last i've been on because last i was on yeah. like at the Ooh. very end of march so <laughs> that, that's that been fun i got yeah. singles last month too i haven't gotten it this month but i haven't really pushed it too hard and, you have uh, the whole today month <laughs> i i know and today I'm catching like a million snubble in Go. I haven't done that. I I have done more Go than I have in a long time, though. Yeah, uh, I I pushed real hard to get that Mewtwo this week, and uh, <laughs> I'm already at the Ho-Oh for yeah next, or this. Yeah, I I do really like week, these so. little timed researches, though. I really hope they kind of continue doing that. Um, these are I, nice. Yeah, I, I like with how like easy them. they are too. Like they're they're very easy. Um, they, I know they purposely made them easy so that you could do them while you're sitting in your house and everything. But I think also just being timed within a week and being like oh what's reasonable within a week instead of something like oh spin seven pokey stops within seven days and yeah and then hope you can get the next nine pages done um (laughs) but i i I, I I like these bottlenecks yeah these bottlenecks are like earn a candy with your buddy hatch an egg it's like okay sure no those are all really good things it's like it's kind of what i was hoping that research itself would be like Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess research to a lesser extent is like that. I really don't like the one per day counting bottleneck and this kind of gets rid of that. Like I'm, if I got a set of research like this every week, I would probably play way more Pokemon Go. I'm not going to lie. And the, uh, new daily quests that they just give you are nice too. Oh, everything they're doing is really nice. And I'm really sad if it, a lot of it goes away post COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, granted, I don't think this is ending anytime soon in like any any real fashion. Like, I think we're gonna go back to like some pseudo way it was before, but with yeah. uh, with more with more precautions installed. So, like, maybe this still happens because uh, I know, as far as I know, most places are saying, "Yeah, you're gonna need to socially distance until uh, God knows how long." I think Google said that they're gonna do it until 2021. Wow. They're prepared until it was Google or Facebook, one of the two. Yeah, yeah. They said we're we're prepared to have our employees work remote until 2021, which is uh, astounding. I mean, I I do believe that some you'll get some mixture of that. I I don't 
even then, like our psychology's kind of changed. Like even if things were to open up today, I don't think a lot of people are going to be like, "Yeah, I want to go out." Oh no! To all these this places. is certainly one thing that I've uh, that I've been thinking of. That this is certainly in the one of the nails, the last nails on the coffin for movie theaters is one, um, one industry that I don't know how well it's going to survive this fiasco because it's I again, it's not just yeah. the the fact that people are not going to the theaters. Is that once all of this is going to go out, the PTS of you know not wanting to be mm-hmm. in a group, you know, it's just who's gonna want to go to who who is worried about their health is going to do go and lock themselves in a movie theater with, you know, a hundred, I don't even know how many people are sitting in in a movie theater. So, um, it's, it's going to be a lot of changes. Yeah. I, I'm really excited, honestly, for drive-in movie theaters. I'm not going to lie. Me too. I I was so sad when they went out. I, well, I mean, there's still plenty of them around. I've always lived within like a few, like within 15, 20 minutes of one. My oh, entire really? life. Yeah, which has been really I need nice. to check here if Washington yeah. has one. I don't know if Washington does, mostly just because Washington, like, I, I think the farther west you go, I don't want to say the word civilized, but the more, uh, <laughs> the more, uh, civilized is the wrong word. It's, it's more modern. Up to date, modern, yeah. Yeah, up to date and modern. And so it, it, I usually find, uh, drive in movie theaters are just more populous where, like, it, there was an older community there before. Right. Um, yeah. Well, it's much like in Puerto Rico. We had one in Puerto Rico. Yeah. The I don't even remember its name. Something driving plot. Uh, driving plot. I think it's what's called. Yeah. And it was in in my hometown actually. And um, I went there a couple of times. Uh, and I love that. Uh, oh, I love the And atmosphere. then they closed. And then it's like, why? Why did they have to close? I think they should bring them back. I love the now atmosphere. more than ever. I really love the atmosphere. And I mean, of course, I live, it's your car. I live, <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I live 15 minutes away from one now. I think within 45 minutes, I can drive to three different ones. Oh, that's um, awesome. So, like, there's there's a ton by me, which is really surprising because I don't think there's that many left in the U.S. I used to be really busy. It's like no. under 400, under 350, something like that. There's a commercial when you go there, usually. Yeah, there's not a lot left. and uh, But I really like the atmosphere. I like that they haven't updated since, like, the 60s. Yeah. Honestly, I mostly just because Thatch is, like... Thatch loves reminiscing, and he goes, I was born in the wrong decade, but then realizes you he are. runs a Pokemon podcast, <laughs> and and realizes that none of those things existed in 1960, so uh, so let's let's not falsely define what Thatch is, <laughs> what, what, Thatch was born in the wrong decade, so, uh, but I, I really appreciate those. Uh, for myself, like uh, Sigma, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Go. Um, I've also been playing some Crystal version as well on the Virtual Console. Um, just because, uh, we, we are also doing, this is another thing that Sigma and I worked on a little bit this week. And I also worked on a little bit with basket is that, uh, we're working on a, uh, a YouTube series for you guys, um, that I'm really excited about. And I'm going to talk about every week because I think that's what reminds you guys to go watch them on YouTube. Yeah. Um, they, they should be starting tomorrow. They should so. be. Yeah, yeah. They should be starting. Like by the time Monday. this is out, there's already an episode on YouTube. Um, yeah. I think it's with me and basket. And so the idea is, uh, these are all like essentially little mini podcasts with uh myself and a co-host we get together we talk about pokemon typically um we talk about whatever pokemon we're game we're playing in this case we're doing a nuzlocke of pokemon fire red together uh we talk about it we play the game together we also just kind of we just kind of talk pokemon in general together because of that um it's just a good conversation and if you're looking for more puckle podcast content like this to a uh, to a slightly different extent i would definitely go suggest it um, I would definitely suggest it. that's over on our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash puckle podcast. Um, I think the schedule that Sigma set up right now is Sundays. Yeah, I think it's going to start Tuesday and then I'm it's going to be like Friday yes. and Sunday for right now. I'm going to let you for the yeah. first couple weeks. There we go. That's what Sigma said. What Sigma said is long. <laughs> so you get three of those a week and they're, they're like 20 to 40 minutes long. So mm-hmm. if you want just like a little bit extra while you're sitting at home and you want a little bit more puckle stuff, that's a great place to go. Just because there's a lot of, um, th- there's just a lot of good stuff there. I, I really like it. I'm really happy with it. Um, and we're not done yet. And Jashira, maybe we should get together and do one of those soon. Oh, we do. Count we me in 100%. Yeah, maybe they're should. very nice to do. So they're not bad to do at all. I mean, I mean, we're all friends too, which works out. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> as, I, I, as long as the recording client's working. Yeah. As long as right. The, the screen share <laughs> client. Uh, <laughs> That's true. That's true. But yeah, I think they're going to start coming out. Yeah, like Sigma said, this Tuesday. So by the time you listen to this, you're only a day away from another piece of content on top of everything that we already are doing. Um, I just wanted to do this. But if I if I say it here, you guys will go watch it, typically. And I because I, I noticed that in the YouTube video views, that 
it, when I hype up a series because I get really excited about it, you guys go listen to it. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Looking at the view. Thatch numbers. has learned the power of hype. I've learned the power of <laughs> hype and, of, and ma- of marketing and hype. I don't know if it's marketing, but it's just something that I've always been bad at because I do this 100% for fun, right? I do like all yep. fuckle for fun. And I, and I always forget like, oh man, if I want people to do things, I actually need to do a call to action. And I keep forgetting to do that. So uh, <laughs> I, I appreciate, I mean, there, there's some other good news for the call of action, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, so on that note, let's shift gears and let's kick it on over to the news. Coming to you live from the Lavender Town Radio Tower, this just in. And welcome to the news. In the news, uh, I mean, there's not a lot this week to talk about, but there is some. I, there's not a lot of no. There's not a lot in terms of numbers, but in terms of content, I think there's a lot because I mean, this is actually a perfect episode for Jashir to be on. So, hey, for, hey. for those of you who are unaware, Nintendo is a business, and <laughs> yes. and like a business, they haven't. They're also a publicly traded business, uh, and like that, they have investors. And so every quarter, they do an investors meeting and they talk about their sales numbers for every every quarter. Um, so. What happened is that typically their numbers get released by the end of uh, the month after the quarter ends. So we did get the new numbers for Nintendo uh, and their video game sales uh, for um, up until March 31st now. And there is a lot to talk about. Um, So crazy, crazy times. Okay, so um, so first of all, let's let's just give some updated sales numbers on 3DS games and then we'll end with the the Switch games. Um, mm-hmm. X and Y is up to 16.54 me- million, uh, which is uh, pretty much where it's been sitting at for the past forever, because it's really hard to mm-hmm. buy a copy of X and Y now. I mean, they're just gone. Yeah. Um, um, same with Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, 14.27 million, though. Um, both of those are, like, really good. Like, Aura's, like, blew away, like, any remake before it. Um, it. It had a lot of help. It had a lot of help. <laughs> it did have a lot of help. It had two Christmases. And it, it had also had Pokemon, Pokemon Go. Go release. It, 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 it had a lot going for it. <laughs> Sun and Moon did 16.18 uh, as of right now. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon did uh, 8.7, which is uh, it's pretty much... The, it's pretty good for a third version. It, but for like, a, I mean, that's the best of a third version, actually, if you look into if you look at yeah. it. Like, I, I yeah. mean, that, that is but the also, best third version. <laughs> also, it's Usum, so, you know. It's no Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, let me tell it, you. It's showing quality doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah. Right. Sales, sales uh, just kind of go up over time. Uh, my it's favorite, hard. my favorite sales number still to this day is always watching the "Let's Go Pikachu" and Eevee number, uh, and that's it's creeping. It, it's it's literally it literally like sold ten million units and then just like stop. It was like it was like it was like now people find them on the ground and I guess they buy them. Um, yeah. because now <laughs> it's, it now it's up to eleven point nine seven million. It's almost twelve. It hasn't gotten to twelve yet. It's almost twelve. People wanted those Gigantamax EP and Pikachu. Uh, and those grand, grandparents that wanted to give yeah. uh, s- <laughs> Swish and uh, ended yeah. up with uh, Let's Go. Let's Go. Yeah, they were told I, to get a Pokemon game. Well, so it took, it took I think, um, I think it took an additional nine months after it hit 10 million to hit 11 million finally. And I think the boost <laughs> that we saw from 11 million to this number now is literally from Christmas. Like, yeah. it's, it's not it's not that impressive. Uh and then, and then the impressive number though is, is Sword and Shield, which is at currently at seventeen point three seven million, um, mm-hmm. which is the. Uh, I mean, so Sigma and I have talked about this offline before because Sigma and I talk about everything um, pretty much once a day. I don't know why, um, but we do. And so, because but we're stuck. yeah, I mean, we yeah <laughs> we have nothing else to do. We night. have nothing else to do. It's fine. Uh, so, but seventeen point three seven million units uh, Swish were sold, which is fun fact the most. The most copies of a Pokemon game that have been sold since Generation Two. Wow! It is crushed uh, everything from Gen Three on. Like this, this beats everything from Gen uh, Three on. It's about to beat Diamond and Pearl. It probably has. Uh, it, oh yeah, Diamond and Pearl did really well yeah. too. They did seventeen some million units. I forgot about like, that. It, but, it's less than but, a million away. Yeah, so, it's it's know. like four hundred thousand away, but it'll hit that by the end of the year. But especially with DLC, the next especially quarter, with probably, DLC, yeah. yeah, coming out. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't be surprised if by the end of this quarter we we see another four hundred thousand units of Swish. Um, just Not to get- mention uh, if they sell a post DLC version, which includes uh, everything. Uh, I don't know. If I that's don't think happen. that's as important. Uh, okay. I, don't, I don't even know if that's going to happen so much. I, I think people will buy the game for the DLC. <laughs> yeah. I, 
<laughs> I think it's very possible, very likely that Sword and Shield will hit the 20 million mark. I don't know if it'll hit the gold and silver mark, which is like 22 million. It's 23 but... million. We checked this yesterday. Okay. Yeah. Or I checked, so... it, I checked it the other day. It's like 23 million for gold and silver. And Sword and Shield, yeah, I don't think Sword and Shield will hit 23 million, but it'll probably, it might hit 20. It depends on if a game comes out next year. I, I think, uh, on it, I don't I know if this is a testament to game. Pokemon or if it's just a testament to the Switch existing, though. Like, I, it's hard to sort <laughs> yeah, that out. Yeah. Because, like, this is what you would expect from, like, a good well. title, like, a, like a, a main Nintendo franchise, like, on the Switch. Because I think, uh, I think one of the biggest, um, I mean, this is probably, this is probably also, like, this is like an Apple, this is like comparing a Gala Apple to, like, uh, a Granny Smith Apple. So they're not exactly <laughs> the same, but they're the same fruit. Um, that's where I'm trying to go with this metaphor, but like, uh, if you look at breath of the wild, right? Mm-hmm. Breath of the wild mm-hmm. is sold like 17 point something million units. Now, um, it, 17.4, it's just above swish. It's like 17.41 on the switch alone. This doesn't include the Wii U number. Um, <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It was like the most attached game of all time. Yeah. And then and there were more copies at one point of breath of the wild <laughs> sold <laughs> yeah, for the switch release. than switches. <laughs> that was fun good. fact that, uh fun that fact that happened near the launch of the switch so uh so that's an interesting fact like that's an interesting factoid like hey you can do that um the uh which is interesting because that also matches like almost exactly the super mario odyssey number which is 17.441 million as well like right now they're exactly the same on the switch uh which says something about uh the zelda game i mean breath of the wild was really good i think we can all agree on that Oh yeah, mm-hmm. masterpiece. But, but like it's vi- it's usually not that close between a Zelda sales number and a Mario sales number on a Nintendo console. Mm-hmm. It's usually yeah. never that close, and uh, I think that just gives like a testament to like, hey, you make a you make a game on the Switch for a popular franchise, it's probably going to get something like some love. I mean, if for comparison as well. Um, again, it's comparing different types of apples, but. Still apples. Um, Animal Crossing like crushed it, mm. and it's at like yeah. 13 million units right now. <laughs> yeah, that was insane. Yeah. To be fair, that had a lot of help from Convit. <laughs> it, it's got well. It, it's, it, it's also different than like Pokemon, right? So Pokemon's a, essentially an annual franchise now, mm-hmm. um, like almost annual. I'm gonna say almost annual because I think they're finally gonna slow down again. I hope um, yeah. because I I can't handle another Pokemon a y- game a year. Like I just can't, I can't keep the up. DLC should be enough for this year. I'm hoping it's, yeah. an, I'm hoping there's just another round of DLC for another year too. I'm going to be completely yes. honest because I, I hope they just take like, I hope there's just two more Christmases where we kind of just get to go slow uh, mm-hmm. and I don't have to be like, yeah, I can't wait for Pokemon Lustrous Pearl and Shiny Diamond. Plus, they have to work on their infrastructure, um, like we talked about in our last episode together, where they have to get Pokemon ready to our new reality. Uh, yeah, kind of. I think it's more of like... I don't think that's as important to them. Yeah. Uh, what's yes. big is, from what I hear, uh, a lot of, like, Japan's infrastructure isn't ready for work for home. home so. Yes, mm. I believe that. Which is uh, ironic. Like, they have a lot of very small... From a civilization that has Wi-Fi in every corner. Yeah, they their apartments are <laughs> uh, so small. How are they supposed to fit all of their t- tech in it? I would like, say in Tokyo that's true. I don't know if that's true, like, yeah, 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 Sentai, of course, yeah. but... <laughs> in Tokyo, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, in Tokyo. But yeah. I've heard that's an issue that Nintendo's dealing with. They think they mentioned it to their uh, stock. Yeah. In yeah. their stock meeting. Oh, I mean, everybody's taking a hit. Um, but yeah, I think I just think it's really interesting that like Switch is doing really well, um, despite all of the backlash it got. And I mean, I, I well, think... It's what I've always been saying, that oh, the backlash I, I mean, comes this... from a very small... Well group of people that get really angry and really loud but really doesn't represent the big spock oh of course it is look at the sales no 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 so i i disagree with you on the people boycotting were small i think the people boycotting were small i think the people upset were hard were large and i'll explain why because this is just this is just my theory but this is just something that i saw like being in the pokemon community at the time and i i think what a lot of people are still going to do like they're not happy about the change but this is like the first real pokemon game on console on like a home mm-hmm. console, and I mean, let, let's let's go Pikachu and Eevee was a lie, um, but um, <laughs> but right. Uh, but, but again, those ten million people, ten still million suckers, including myself. But then nobody yeah, else, and me, and, and then nobody else. That's the that's the main thing. You have to remember, like, and nobody else. Like, let's put that. Let's yeah. put that qualifier. Once on there. the initial sales went out, everyone's like, oh yeah, don't don't yeah, do that. Yeah, I don't recommend it. I don't. 
<laughs> it's short. I, I think it's the also a testament weird. because at this time, if you actually look in like the, the price of the game on Amazon um, at this time, like if you looked at in May of 2019, after Let's mm-hmm. Go Pikachu and Eevee came out, that you could go buy a copy of Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee for 40 bucks right now. Because I was looking for another copy of Sword and Shield for various reasons. Um, mm-hmm. And it, you can't get a copy of Sword and Shield for less than 55 right now. Mm-hmm. But that's standard for Nintendo pricing, though. Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, yes. But I, I think it's the difference between the quality of the game because it, at the same time in its life cycles, like it, the pricing's different. And so I think that's a comparison. Uh, I mean, it's also Sword and Shield, which I do think is a better game than Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. What I mean about the, the minority was who I was talking about are those people that are so angry at the game that they wanted to... Uh, oh, to quote, boycott. Unquote, yeah, no, no. Boy- I, I, I totally agree. But boycott I, right? to I think... I, I don't think and that... And was wishing or hopeful of the demise of the game and this is the oh, fall yeah, yeah, no, 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 of no. Pokemon and Pokemon as we know it has ended and here we are and it's bigger than ever. So I don't know that I can say I disagree in... Like, I don't... I'm not as drastic with my thoughts. Let's say that. But I do think that this was definitely like a tonal shift in the Pokemon franchise um, just from the community because there are a lot of complaints even post launch um, Mm -hmm. about this game. And I think they're all valid. I think I think that um, Joe Merrick said it actually on Twitter the other day. um, And he said this was kind of the straw that broke the camel's back because it it, it highlighted it brought up a lot of things that people have just been tolerating for years Mm -hmm. in Pokemon, which is fair. Uh, I think that's a valid criticism. Um, uh, and for me, like literally my one bar, like I've said a million times, like just put all the Pokemon in and I'll probably enjoy the game. Like I, <laughs> I'm going to be mm-hmm. completely honest. Uh, you can make, you can make it the worst game in the entire world. And I'd be like, yeah, but I can get Totodile after I beat it. Right. I mean, we and, already went through that. It's called gen three. Uh, yes, we have. And that, that didn't go well either. That didn't go well. I mean, it just yeah. didn't. um, I, I, th- I mean, it didn't go well and mm-hmm. I ha- I was more I remember as even as a, a high schooler I was more angry at Generation Three than Gen Eight. Uh, mm. I I think I I can agree with that as well. Just because um, I I think one there's always like in Gen Eight I always had the hope that it's coming back to an extent, and we'll we'll see how we'll see we'll mm-hmm. see how well they do that. Um, and then. Uh, in Gen 3, they were just like, no, it's just like a hard cutoff, right? There was no way to transfer. But they were talking about Pokemon Home at the same time. I'm like, they're not just going to have you sit it there uh, forever. It's just going to be one of those slow rollouts while they go through and they, like, polish up the model. Well, I I think models is the wrong word because, like, there's some strong technical language there that people get mad about. Um, mm-hmm. But they, I mean, they did do some updates on, like, the finished product of a Pokemon in Sword and Shield. That's what I'll say because mm-hmm. I think you can see that mostly in Pokemon, like, Cottony. Um, Cottony and Whimsicott because they they definitely have like different colors to them now, mm-hmm. um, and so th- like they might not have changed the polygons themselves, but they did go ahead and they changed the uh, they they changed like the what's it called? Oh my gosh, the textures, mm-hmm. right? Which I I think people get lost because like that's not a day job. Like you can't just change a texture in a day. That takes some time, <clears throat> and so if they're going through and they're kind of just like finessing and like making sure that the Pokemon look good when they get ported in because. Uh, they did show, uh, by they, I mean, hackers did show, um, like two days after Switch dropped that <laughs> they could, uh, that they could inject old Pokemon models into the game. But the difference is they did say they don't look as good. Mm-hmm. And so they did do some updates and I don't know how long that takes. I'm not a graphic designer. I'm not a guy who does 3D modeling. So, um, I, I mean, I'll take them at their benefit of the doubt. Like they did make changes, um, I, I just wish they were a bit more transparent about what kind of changes they were making and stuff like that. Um, but that that's neither here nor there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think I think overall, the number of people that were unhappy with it, um, we're still going to try it out just to see, hey, is this worth it? Um, I don't mm-hmm. I didn't think that's I never thought Sword and Shield was going to be the moment in the Pokemon franchise where you see it drop off. I can no. see it post Sword and Shield is where you see the drop off. I think if we continue to have annual releases with sword and, yes or after sword and shield it could start falling off but i yeah. think dlc is probably gonna save that i think i think yeah. dlc it was 100 percent the right answer like <laughs> we'll look at the attach rate on the dlc oh, it's from crazy. the game it's crazy and no i yeah. i totally think dlc is the way to go and i think they should just take another 30 dollars from me in 2021 um like mm-hmm. they should suck it out of my pocket that's fine um like it, it's i'm i very much agree with that i think sword and shield did do some things right i think it did some things wrong and but I think DLC is one of the things they did very 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 right, mm-hmm. very very right. Um, so let's let's shift gears because we just spent like a bajillion minutes on that. Um, <laughs> and 
talk about Pokemon Mystery Dungeon for a hot minute. Um, so Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Team DX sold 1.22 million units in March, which is uh, nice, I guess. Um, yeah. I, I don't know if that's good or it bad. It broke a million. It um, broke a it million. It broke a million, which I think is very important for those games to have done, because I, I do enjoy having, like, console spinoff games Pokemon. Just saying. <laughs> um, I would also. I don't think it also got near the marketing that any other spinoff got whatsoever just because it was just like hey it, it was just like a surprise like hey yeah by the way this comes out in six weeks so you can buy it if you want i mean it led into the dlc announcement so it was kind of forgettable and then it's like here's the demo okay cool they didn't um, do anything enjoy. with it though outside of that that was the thing like i think the people that grabbed that game were the people that were just like yeah let's buy it they know it's niche they they know yeah they knew his niche and I think for a niche title selling one point two two million I, units I was just in gonna a say one point two twenty two million in a minute it is a lot for a yeah game that I didn't think was gonna do that well yeah, yeah I, I wasn't sure if it was gonna break a million that I, I mean that I'm was really good it. selling that much is really good um I like that's just nuts to me that, that Mr Dungeon sold that much I, for reference for like. Past, Especially like, for an old game, too. For past spinoff games, um, outside of the original Mystery Dungeon, um, I think it was typical to see, like, 2.5 million units sold for a spinoff game. Like, the first version of the spinoff game. The ones game. on the DS, yeah. The ones, the ones on the yeah. DS. Lifetime? Yeah. Uh, Lifetime, yes. So, j just as, like, a, like, the original Mystery Dungeon on the DS sold, like, 3 million units. And then there was and also... there were the, two versions. And there was so. another... Well, there was another version that was on Game Boy that sold another 2 million units. So, it was, like, 5 million total. Mm-hmm. And then even the, then the other Mystery Dungeon games just sold like two and a half million units or something like that. Pokemon Coliseum sold two and a half million units. XD sold 1.3 million units or something like that. Um, and then, yeah, I, I looked a lot into these sales numbers just for comparison, just to see kind of where we stand. And I mean, this is only a month, right? So mm -hmm. uh, there's still it's like a Christmas very special time. month. Uh, it, also, there is uh, extended circumstances with Convy 19 and people stuck oh, yeah. at home so uh th these numbers are actually higher uh could be higher because of what we're going six uh, animal crossing is the best example it came in the perfect time animal crossing this is, is a much different starting beast. it's a much different and, beast though and people but more people has bought animal crossing than ever in the history of yeah, uh, yeah right but, and not not comparing yeah. just in indicating that the state that we're at right no, now I, are it was, pushing more sales animal crossing was also different in that it was the first game in a franchise for seven years in a very beloved franchise for seven years and it's a very approachable franchise yeah and it's very approachable rescue team yes right or right but Dungeon, remember yeah. that we didn't have danny trejo uh playing or chrissy Teigen and before these are all in i would i would argue that the culture of the internet has also shifted since 2013 mm-hmm <laughs> Um, I, it's a combination, it's also the switch boost, like, because I think you had a stigma towards the 3DS that it was a kid's toy versus the switch. Especially the 2DS. Yeah. The <laughs> yeah. The 2DS didn't help that either. And, uh, I saw, I saw that the 2DS was up to like 75 or the 3DS family was up to like 75 million in sales. And I'm like, cool. So like I'm 1% of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I bought like three of them. I, I own, I own, I think five or six 3DSs in the house. Uh, in the house, uh, I think we've owned like eight or nine 3DSs. Some of them have been traded in, but... But they've given no reason to get a new Switch yet, so... Oh, no. I, like, I'm expecting them to do something, though, in the nearest future. I don't think it'll be this year because of all the events happening, but I think yes. next year's probably a good year for it. Yes. Yeah, Especially since they said they're halfway through their life cycle with the Switch, or entering the halfway point of their life cycle from their shareholders meeting, so... I'm gonna make a uh, a hard a hard segue talking about COVID. <laughs> uh, we got new anime episodes announced, Woo! but no release dates because that's Aww. not gonna happen. Uh, I wonder if the U.S. is gonna catch up to the Japanese uh, releases. I mean, to be fair, we were already behind. Like we were behind by like 12 weeks, and then we took like a 12 week break, so we're like 20 some <laughs> weeks behind. But uh, I, I'm very interested to see if we do catch up. Uh, because I mean, it's like a month away before Netflix drops the first 12. I, I'm, I'm actually really excited for that. I'm really excited. I, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. I think the first 12 aren't as exciting as like the next 12, but sure. yes, no, the first 12 aren't as excited. The next 12 are very exciting, but, uh, I, I am very excited just for those episodes to come out so that I can like watch them with my wife. And then like, maybe we can do something as a community, have like a watch party or something. Oh, tell me mm -hmm. in. Yeah. Uh, so 
Uh, Pokemon has announced those. Uh, one of these episodes doesn't feature a Sobble, but who knows when we'll ever get one. Uh, that Ash will get it, and it'll get a special form, and then it, he'll release it. <laughs> and then the special form will come to us in Gen 9. It's fine. He's catching all the popular Gen 1 Pokemon right now. He is. And then he is. Real loop. And a real loop. And real loop. <laughs> and a real loop. Uh, all right. So let's jump into some Pokemon Go stuff. Uh, until May 15th, the throwback challenge is Johto Research with a Ho-Oh encounter if you complete it. Shiny Dunsparce can also be found in the game now, so you can go find a pink Dunsparce. Regions must be completed with one within the week for them to occur. Uh, completing all four of them will allow you to access a special research on June 3rd to June 8th, which you can catch and evolve Galarian Zigzagoon, Galarian Meowth, and evolve that into Berserker, apparently. Um, Galarian Darumaka to allow you to get Galarian Darmanitan and Galarian Stunfisk. Yay. So I actually need a Stunfisk, so. Yeah, so. it's very exciting. Um, it, I mean, I just need Stunfisk in general. <laughs> I, I uh, saw one the other night and it ran away. So. Yeah. Uh. Uh, so... <laughs> Uh, yeah, so tell me more. Oh, actually, Sigma, you're yellow, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, oh, yeah this, is, yellow. this is exciting. We talked about this for a hot minute, too. <laughs> yeah. Starting soon and beginning in Australia, Pokemon Go is altering how players can get Pokecoins. Ooh. They're it's actually upping good. the... Uh, it's it's okay. Not quite. It's, it's okay. <laughs> Don't keep going because you're going lower they're, each time. They're, pro- <laughs> they're probably going to backstep on some of it and fix it's it. Better, but... It's better than it is. <laughs> it's passable. <laughs> yeah. Expanding the daily amount to 55, and they're going to add a bunch of quests that if you complete them all, you get five coins in the day, which is kind of annoying because I believe it's a bunch of easy things, and then there's like win a raid, which is annoying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I don't think I don't think winning a raid is that tedious. To be fair, I think I think, I think uh, it depends on if you live close to a raid. Uh, that's true. That's true. I wish they would. I, I the sooner they put in raiding with friends, the better. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The sooner they do that, but, because like I really want to be like, hey, Sigma, let's raid. By the way, we should do our best friend thing today. Um, <laughs> yeah, and, we should. Yeah. Uh, but uh, yeah, so I'd rather do that. Um, then and I don't know this, I mean, I, I barely get 50 a day now, unless like I make it, make an effort to go out and take over like five gyms. The thing is they also cut the number of coins you get for being in a gym in half. They do do So that. I guess yeah. you get two for an hour, being in for an hour instead yeah, of four. That's fine though. Cause like I, I would say that the only reason I go and I put five Pokemon in gyms, uh, when I go out and I do that is just because like it'll, t- it's random which one will get kicked back to me. Mm-hmm. And then that one will max out my coins. I and mean, the thing is, there's no reason to have the gym coins. Even I, I think there's, I think there's some reason to do it. Just like a small incentive, like hey, if you do it. But it also, I like that it 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 probably drops the competitiveness a little bit as well, because sometimes it's just real bad. And like, yeah, I'll have mm-hmm. people just like camping at a gym, like literally camping, and. <laughs> It's just a problem. I like this better because I think I think I'll be able to get more Poke coins while I'm in my house than otherwise. Yeah. yeah, I one thing I'd like is if like they made the free raid pass also possibly remote, but well, they we'll need to, they need to do a free remote raid pass. That's really what they need to do. Like I, they just need to combine that. the two or something. Yeah, they I, need to I combine. Don't. Like you can do one with one or the other. I think that needs to be possible. I absolutely agree with that. Um, uh, Jushiro, take us home. Talking about the uh, the totally exciting things happening. So if you're not excited yet, I got news for you. Carvana Incense Day is scheduled to occur on May 17 from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. local time to save us from uh, the apocalypse. I blame, Using- I blame P. McGee. We should have a different one this week. Uh, I don't think – I think 17th is the one for the week after this. There's another, there's, there's another Incense Day. Also, I don't think it's the 17th. I, I think that uh, oh. I think they were. You're thinking the uh, Snubble Day. I think they announced them at the same time. No, well, Snubble Day is today, right? But yes, oh, yes. oh, Carvana. Oh, ew, oh, yeah. oh. I understand. This is an addition. <laughs> incense Day yeah, yeah. isn't. I got Incense Day confused with the other, like spawning day. Oh yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Community they have day. too many events happening at once. I'm confused. I mean, at least they're lighter events. I'm okay with that. These are lighter events, and I'm okay with that, yes. Like, if you skip it, it's like, whatever. But using this incense will primarily cause Carvana and other dark and water type Pokemon to spawn. But if that's not enough of you, hold on to your shoes. Because you 
Alomolo, uh, Alomolo Mola will also be spawning next to a Scraggy for I need Pokemon Scraggy. Go. Uh, Scraggy uh, can get really easy from the Go Battle League. I've only just been recently trying it. And you can get uh, I got to rank two last night. So Speaking yeah. of the Go Battle League, the season two is about to begin in May 11 after being yes. slightly delayed. Yeah, uh, that's true. There's a new league. I forgot about that. Uh, um, so other things that I want to I want to talk about. Um, one, uh, this is Puckle. Uh, this is the longest news segment we've had in a very long time. Uh, but it's okay. It was exciting. It was exciting. Uh, but so first, this is Puckle related stuff. First, I did that call out for uh, iTunes reviews to get us to 400 and you guys crushed it. Um, Yay. Like we were, we were like only five away, and I think we ended up getting something like ten to fifteen iTunes reviews. So, like, good for you guys. Like, I really, I really appreciate that, and uh, I, I really appreciate that. And I did say that if this happens, like, Puckle will do a giveaway for a Pokemon, and so I do want to throw it up on Twitter. So we'll throw it up. This will, this is Monday when the show comes out. We'll put it up for like two days, and we'll say I, I'm thinking like either Marsh Shadow or just like a Plain Zero or something like that, right? Yeah, some, something mm-hmm. that's in the game, but it's hard to get. Um, and we'll have a we'll have a vote. You guys can pick, and then we'll have a we'll have a giveaway date set for later this week, probably on uh, probably on Wednesday. Uh, what is Wednesday's date? I don't know calendars anymore. The thirteenth. Uh, mm-hmm. And I'm gonna try to run that like the whole day, um, like from like eight a.m. Eastern to like ten p.m. Eastern. We'll see if we can run that the whole day. I think it'll be really exciting. You guys can get your Zer Auras or your Marshadows, whichever one we choose. So, uh, I, I thank you for that. Um, and if this, if like, if this is any indication of like how, how much your call of action will work, go watch that YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> um, in addition, I mean, if this is something that we can keep doing and we can keep pushing forward, maybe we start doing this like every 50 iTunes reviews, we do a giveaway. Mm-hmm. That sounds so like a good that. idea. Yeah. Just like a, just like a little goal. Like if you want to review us on iTunes and you want to get something out of it, like there's, there's your incentive. So thank you for that. Uh, but yeah, that is, that is it for right now. Uh, we are going to go ahead and kick it on over to the Poke Quiz, where we're going to quiz your co-host on their insane Pokemon knowledge. And welcome to the Poke Quiz. This part of the show, we quiz Jushiro and Sigma, who are acting as a team on their Pokemon knowledge to answer five Pokemon-themed trivia questions. Not Puckle trivia questions, not general trivia questions, not science trivia questions, not Nintendo trivia questions. Pokemon trivia questions that are brought to you from our Discord server in the channel, hashtag trivia submissions. Uh, not Thatch's DMs, not the, <laughs> not the Puckle email. These are brought to you from the trivia the submissions iTunes reviews either. Not the iTunes reviews either. No. <laughs> trivia questions do not come from iTunes reviews. <laughs> I will say that much. Um, so on that note, though, we have five questions that are each worth one point apiece. These two are going to be competing against their fellow co-host in a race to 30 points. Whoever gets the 30 points first gets $20 of store credit to PokemonCenter.com to buy whatever their heart desires, whether that be a Thwacky plush or some stupid pins. I don't know. (laughs) Uh, They they, uh, are going to answer as a team. Uh, It's going to be a good time. So uh, let's get into it. This segment, as always, is brought to you by AnimeGravy.com, your one-stop shop for anime, nerd, geekdom, art stuff. I love their D&D stuff particularly, but I also, I mean, they, they also have a green Taurus poster, so good on them. Uh, they are offering up at the end of this trivia cycle, a $20 credit to their store, uh, to one of our lucky fans who has their trivia question right on the show. So that for that to happen, like I said, you need to go to our discord server, which is included in the show notes. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, our first question is going to be from Lord Snorlax. And he wants to know, what is the highest level of any Pokemon used by a gym leader before the player enters the Hall of Fame? And I'll give you like a plus or minus, I guess, three on this, just so you get a window. The highest in what? In any? All in, of them? In any game before you enter the Hall of Fame, so no like rematches. Uh, I feel like it's probably going to be Black White or Black White 2. And um, what level would that be? I need be? the level. Yeah. I know. Uh, 
60? 62? 65? No. I think it, it's probably like high 40s. Oh. Really? Yeah, because the, usually the Elite Four is like mid 50s or something like that. Okay. It, so maybe you say 48. That encompasses like 45 to 51. So, um, yeah, because this doesn't count Kanto and Gold and Silver, right? Uh, no. Okay. Even then, I don't think those would beat this. So, <laughs> oh, so, so it's higher. Okay. Also, that's post Hall of Fame anyway. That's post Hall of Fame anyway. Yeah. yeah. That, so, let's see. Those were like, those were like mid to high 50s. So maybe we do say 60. Okay. Yeah, I was thinking that 60 sounded more around what I remember seeing the highest being before we beat the game. Yeah, I don't know what game would have that, but yeah, 60 sounds fine. You want to go with 55? Because <laughs> uh, I'm pretty sure gym leaders in Kanto were like 56, so if it's higher than that, then it pro- I, yeah, we could say like 58. 58? 58. 58. 58 is within the margin of error. The yes. answer is level 59. Um, and that's actually Wolfric's Avalug. Really? It was oh. level 59. He had like some crazy high level Pokemon in X and to Y. To be fair, it's an it's Avalug. It's Ice-type though. Like, yeah, it's an Avalug. Yeah, so it's an Ice-type right? and it's an Avalug. <laughs> it's, so. It was really a handicap for the Avalug. Yeah, it's, a, <laughs> it's very specialized in defense. Absolutely. All right, so our next question, uh, so that's one point for you guys. Um, our next question is going to come from Skullmane Banky. Uh, I hope I am pronouncing that correctly. What non-legendary Pokemon in Black 2 slash White 2 has a different ability depending on its form? I mean, Basculins have different abilities. Depending on the form, though? I mean, there's Red Stripe. There's Red Stripe and Blue Stripe, right? <laughs> oh, there, there we go. I, I, one of them has a different ability than the other, so. Is there any other? Um, pro there might be, but, you know, masculine exists. <laughs> That's just so blunt. <laughs> it's also such a disappointing fact. Masculine exists. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it somehow made the cut to Sword and Shield, too. I would have preferred an Elamomola, let's be honest. Elamomola made it, too. It's fine. No, it didn't. Didn't it? I thought did it? it did. I don't think it did. I thought Alola Mola made it. No, I don't think it's here. Uh, Alola Mola, I'm pretty sure made it. But is is Basculin your answer? Yeah, I, I know it has different hidden abilities, so sure. Uh, that is uh, that is correct. It uh, it can either be adaptability or rockhead as a blue stripe, or it can be um, what's the other one? It is, or Reckless in Adaptability for the Red Stripe. So there we go. All right, so that's two for two. You guys are two points up. Uh, our next question is our Pokedex entry, and this one's going to be from Lord Snorlax again. Uh, and he wants to know, this Pokemon's Y Pokedex entry reads, when attacking prey, it can reach speeds up to 310 miles per hour. It finishes its prey off with a colossal kick. Who's that Pokemon? Huh. Wow, and ferocious kick. Predator. Is 310 miles per hour. How much miles? 310. 310. It's a very exact amount. <laughs> I really... Blaziken I really kicks things. I'm uh, still looking for a little... Oh, man, a little Mola isn't in Gen 8. Right? You're right. Never mind. It should be. It, I, 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 I hope thought it, it was. In. Isle of Armor seems like the right place for it. It's fine. I think I think Isle of Armor feels like the right place for like the other four hundred and fifty that are missing, but that's just me. <laughs> except the legend, except the legends, and Magirna. except the legendary. Magirna can stay away. Magirna, like, if we don't add Magirna's coming back. Let's be honest. <laughs> if we don't add Magirna, I'm okay with it. Uh, but, huh? What are you thinking, Jushiro? <sighs> um, I don't I'm know. I'm awful at Pokemon Dex questions. Uh, fast. Like, I it, don't think it hits three chicken and it finishes him off with a kick. What goes really fast? It's a predator and kicks. Right? I can think of things that kick, but they're not predators. Like, I don't exactly. think Blaziken can kick or uh, is a predator. I don't think, like, Lapunny is a predator. 
And I don't think yeah. Lepani's that fast either. Lepani's slow. <laughs> All right. And exactly. And, and, and might be that fast, but it doesn't kick. It doesn't things. kick. Yeah. Um Sharpedo doesn't have legs. Just just throwing that out there. <laughs> <laughs> So I really am, I would say Blaziken is the only thing that matches because even though technically it's not a predator, it's still like a hawk-ish, even though it comes from a chicken. It's a chicken hawk, maybe. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. So, (laughs) um, but I, I, I don't, can't really think of anything else that goes really fast and kicks that it's a predator. Right. So what do you want to do? I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm terrible at Pokedex questions. Okay. Blaziken it is. Blaziken is incorrect. Aww. The answer is Talonflame. Oh, son of the other chicken. The other chicken. You, like, you guys kept saying Blaziken. I'm like, that's so close. But like, how you're does it kick? <laughs> with, with, right? with this little claw foot thing. It goes, ha-pa. That's like, with not little a chicken kick. Leg. Well, then it better learn Blaze Kick when it's in Isle of Armor. Oh, it's all I'm saying. Better. <laughs> exactly. Uh, that's a all, TR. All right. No Our excuse. next question is your bonus point question. Uh, you can't get up to three points here because you missed a question before this. Um, this one is from Nelson, and there's five answers. I only need three to get you full points. What five evolved Pokemon become ghost types when they have, ev- which means their pre evolution, their pre pre evolved forms do not have the ghost type? Ninjask, so, Marowak, two. and Decidueye are two, right? Yeah, and uh, Ninjask, right? Uh, I don't know. Does he, do we count that as evolution? I would count Shedinja as an evolution, yes. There we go. Like, it's kind of just a husk. It's there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's three. That's three. So that gives uh, you guys all the points. Yeah. I mean, that so gives you, who else? Like, just for the, just for funsies. The other two that you missed, um, are Frostlass. Oh, yeah, Ooh, yeah. right. I, yeah, yeah. I probably would have continued to forget that. This one you probably wouldn't think about, but it, it's very true. Uh, Lunala. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, wouldn't have got that one either. So there you go. That's uh, but you guys are now you're five for you're five for uh, four now. Yeah, so good for you guys. Uh, your last question is your um, is your base stat question, and this one's going to come from Missing No Seven Two Nine on the Discord server. <laughs> I wish we had more reasonable names, but it's okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what psychic type Pokemon has the lowest base HP? Um, okay. Uh, it might actually just be Abra. You I do also you Abra. do have the hint still. Yeah, use the you, hint. You, it. hint. Uh, this it's is a dual useless. type Pokemon. Okay, so it's not Abra. Hmm. The what's the It's a baby as well. It's a baby as well. Oh, oh. okay. So, so I guess what? that puts us down to Smoochum. No, no, it's why not? Yeah, Smoochum Mr. or Mime Jr. Smoochum Mime Jr., I think, is their two options. Okay, Smoochum or Mime Jr. Mime, go with okay, Smoochum. Mr. Mime has a really low HP stat, so... So does Jinx, doesn't she? I Probably. Yeah. I know she has a really low defense stat, too. Um, yeah. You sneeze and you knock her off. Same with Mr. Mime, though. Uh, <clears throat> so... It'd be the creepy clown one or the creepy black face one? Uh, I'm going to go with... I, I think it might be the clown, because I think the Gen 2 babies had slightly better stats than the Gen 4 babies. Okay, then we'll go with the creepy clown baby. Uh, the creepy clown baby is correct. Yes, um, good it's job, my junior, Sigma. Just for clarification. Uh, so that gives <laughs> you guys six points today, though. Uh, you guys did pretty well there. You got six, so let me go ahead and type that in. That does change up the standings because you guys weren't even on the board. So that changes up the standings and puts a lot of people in second place. Um, <laughs> Yay. That's that's the answer. Um, so in first place, we have Sublime with 11 points, followed by a four-way tie for second place between P. Mickey, Whimsicott, R. Sigma, and Jushiro at six yes. points. And Seth Vilo brings up the rear with five in, uh, in I guess, sixth place, technically. And then everybody else is yet to get on the board. So exciting. <laughs> if Seth's on next episode, he's going to, like, jump everyone. It's fine. Uh, he has to get all seven points, I mean, before he can beat I, someone. I mean, he's jumping the tie at second. All, all right. On that note, though, guys, that's it for Poke Quiz. We'll be back at you next week with more Poke Quiz action. 
Uh, on that note, though, we're going to kick things on over to the topic. We are here with another iTunes review. Thank you to all of you for making that push to 400. Like I said, every 50 or so, maybe we'll do one of those giveaways as well. So thank you to Kyle's Boy Toy for <laughs> for his review. Push for 400, hands down, best Pokemon podcast. Well, thank you for that. If you could review us on whatever platform you review us on, we would really appreciate it. Uh, thanks again, guys. Uh, and we'll move on to the topic. And welcome to the topic. Our topic today is going to be Pokemon we would like to see get Gigantamax forms in Isle of Armor. So exciting. Isle of Armor, we know, is going to be bringing you more Gigantamax Pokemon in the DLC. We know for a fact that Venusaur and Blastoise are going to get their Gigantamax forms. That trailer's coming. Yeah. That uh, I don't know if that trailer's coming. I don't know if anything's a given at this point. Uh, that trailer's coming, I'm sure. <laughs> I'm very upset we haven't gotten more. I mean, we got we got the one thing in that little mini direct back in I think that was March now, um, mm-hmm. which, which is I mean, time's just a construct. So uh, I, I have no idea how far away that actually is from my current position in the temporal landscape. But uh, it, it was it feels like it was a long time ago. <laughs> Isle of Armor is very cool. I'm very excited for it. It's really interesting thinking that we're like less than two months away from it for sure. Still feels like so long though. I, I, I've been waiting for this for so long. We're possibly just a month away, so it's possibly. It's I think you're too optimistic because they keep saying in like all like in the two previous trailers we got, they go by the end of June. Shrug shoulders, <laughs> and it's just like cool. That means you haven't finished it yet. That's what that tells me. Uh, or Japan was going to get Zerud on the fifteenth, so that eventually has to be put in the game before they can start redeeming those codes. One thing I've learned in the past, like, three years of covering Pokemon is that there are no longer news, or there's no longer any rules, and it's very hard to predict literally anything yep. about their announcements. That's the one thing I've learned. <laughs> um, like, that, that is the one constant there is. There's just no more rules, and I can't apply logic because that would just make sense. I, I think they just do it to me on par- purpose. Like, there's probably somebody listening to this, and they're just like, Dash thinks it's going to happen this way. <laughs> not going to happen. I'm, not. I'm probably the reason Flygon doesn't have a Mega. I probably said once, like, Flygon should get a Mega, and they're just like, nope, not going to happen. They gave Butterfree a Gigantamax when Beedrill got a Mega, and they still I, I think that's, Flygon. I think that's realistically okay, though. Like I'm, I'm okay with Flygon or not Flygon getting a Mega, but I'm okay with I'm okay with B- Butterfree getting the Gigantamax and Beedrill getting the Mega. Um, mm-hmm. Now, I know both you and I are very um, are very Sigma and I, I should say, not Jushiro, but you and I are of the same mind that like G- Gigantamax should just be Megas, and they I, should be, yeah, they no. you, they should be. I I absolutely agree. Um, I don't think there's any reason for them to be. <laughs> To be a separate form. Uh, I This was also like a very hard topic for me to come up with ideas with. Because unlike Megas where it's just like, yeah, I want this Pokemon to be better. Thinking of Gigantamax Pokemon, I can't it's not say. A stat thing, it's an it doesn't guarantee thing. they're better. I, yeah, I can't, be like, I can't be like, yeah, I can't wait for this Pokemon to get better. It, because it just doesn't. It just gives them a cool form and gives me something to go after, I guess. I would say that maybe there's a couple of them where like their moves are worth it. But even then, that just doesn't seem like enough of a power creep for me. Mm-hmm. That that's a topic for another day uh, of a Thatch rant, but <laughs> I think there'd be some. There's definitely a lot of candidates, and by a lot of candidates, I mean anything that's not Gen one or eight. All right. Oh, um, I was thinking a lot of things in Gen eight. Like, did you remember Oct- Grappaloct is a Pokemon? That's true. Grappaloct, Grappaloct, wow. getting. <laughs> honestly, I'd love I'd love Mega Grappaloct because I feel <laughs> right. like Grappaloct is just bad enough that it's not good. Um. And I would like I would like to see it uh, just become like a little bit better. Such a good design. It's mm-hmm. such a cool Pokemon. And I'm I'm what disappointed me the most is like when I saw when because I, I, I looked at the leaks before the game came out and I wanted to play. And I'm mm. like, man, that'd be a really cool Pokemon to go through the game with. And you don't get it until like really late. Really you get it after yeah. the sixth gym. It was yeah. it was bad. You don't get oh. it until really really late. It was just so frustrating. And you found. I think you found like Rappaloct at the same time you found their unevolved forms. Yeah, too, you did. For some that was right. Most, so that you was, don't even get yeah. the joy of evolving it if you find one already pretty evolve. Yeah, that was a disappointment there. One of, one of my favorite memories is uh, as playing through Pokemon in general was I was playing I was playing Pokemon Sapphire. I remember this very vividly. I had my Game Boy Advance with a Wormlight when I was a mm-hmm. kid, 
it, I didn't look at like any of the Pokemon or anything. The only press release information I got for Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire before I started the podcast was Nintendo Power. Um, <laughs> and so like I did all the Nintendo Power stuff, but I remember I was in uh, I, what's the name of the mountain? Mount Chimney. It's yeah. the one where you yeah, go yeah, fight yeah. Team Magma slash Team Aqua. I remember fighting and finishing off Archie and all of my Pokemon like level like I think three or four of my Pokemon leveled up in that fight and they all leveled up to their evolution level. <laughs> <laughs> like I like you I don't know how it happened, but like a Shroomish evolved into a Breloom, uh Makuhito <laughs> evolved into a Hariyama, and like uh I know Numble evolved into Camerupt, and it was just crazy. <laughs> I think Mark Stomp evolved into Swampert too. It was crazy. It, I mean, I didn't have, I wasn't the best at leveling at the time. So it was, it was just a cool experience. Just like seeing that and like having that experience. And I feel like that we got missed out with, with it gets missed out, especially in later games because they, they are just like, yeah, we came up with these cool Pokemon, but we didn't put them until like the very end. Right. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think, I think the best, I think the best example of these, like not even touching Gen 8, the best example of missed opportunity with Pokemon, Rufflet and Vullaby. 100 percent you know how cool it would have been to like yeah we got this pit of thing but then like a couple of routes you find a rufflet and then your rufflet evolves at a reasonable level not 54 <laughs> and it evolves at, it evolves at like level 38 or 40 and then it becomes a braviary and like mm -hmm. by like gen 6 you know how much fun this sounds right now you know how stop much stop it thatch don't make sense. I literally just want Game Freak to come to me and be like, hey, Thatch, could you just like give us a few ideas? <laughs> because I have them. It'd be really cool. I mean, if we're gonna if we're gonna retcon that evolutions can evolve from stones like Leafeon, like can we <sighs> right. retcon Braviary's level? Like re evolutionary requirement? That'd be cool. Yeah, everything at the end of the uh decks for you know, but yeah. needs like adjustment. Maybe but, not Volcarona. Volcarona is fine at 60, sure. Whatever. But I do agree that Graplock does need a Gigantamax. We'll bring that back before I, well, I was going to say. <laughs> before I complain about game design. The topic's not what Pokemon do you want to see a Gigantamax form of. It's uh, it's what Pokemon <laughs> do you want to do you want to see uh, <laughs> change the evolution level. Yeah. Um, but I, I think I mean I think that's okay. But I think it would be really cool. I, I'm really disappointed. Like I, I'm going to be completely honest. I'm really disappointed that Gen One got a lot of the love again. Yeah, with with not even the just that, but also just Galarian forms in general. Mm. Like the not the non Gen one Galarian forms are like Zigzagoon, which is probably the coolest one. Granted, um, right. yeah, 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 and uh, Stunfisk and Yamask. Right, I am probably missing something. Yamask is cool. Uh, Corsola, 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 is the, big Corsola one. Is the other one. Yes, it, but then it was like Gen one stuff again. It was like here's another Meowth because we need that. Um, here's uh. He Here's Mr. Mime, because we need that. We wanted to terrorize your dreams. Uh, what's it called? He rain dance? Oh, no. Uh, um, tap dancer. Tap dancer. He's a tap dancer now. Uh, yes. It's very weird. Don't worry. But also ice. Yeah. It's, it's so fine. Mr. Why? Rhyme is it? Mr. Rhyme is just not like anything that's, you know, not scary. Don't worry. He's, he's going to be a good card in the TCG next set. It's fine. Probably. Probably. And that's Dash. I mean... He's in the new Night March. That that's the thing. But yeah, it, I would I would love to see something like a Gen two Pokemon or like a or a Gen three Gen four Gen four got zero love. Like there was there was no Gen four Galar Galarian form or Gigantamax obviously because the only Gigantamax you got were Gen one Gen eight and Garbodor. I I think it'd be really cool just to like I don't know pull something from Gen four like take Obama Snow. Obama Snow's already in the right. game. I was surprised Lucario didn't get one. I'm surprised as well. Actually, yeah, I'm surprised at that <laughs> right. That would have been. I mean, I mean at the same G -Max time, Max Lucario would be cool. I mean, we already gave four forms to Charizard, so why not like a uh, why not like another one for Lucario? Give me a uh, Gigantamax Lycanroc and make him look like the guy from uh, what's it Rampage? That, that's possible. I think Lycanroc <laughs> comes back with Isle of Armor. It yeah, does. does. Lycanroc comes back, and I think uh, the other one that came back that's that was really interesting that would be really cool to see is uh, Zoroark. I'm thinking just like the the here's the marketable one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And it's always a dog since Gen 4. <laughs> I mean, that's true. I mean, Le Lucario, then Zoroark, and then we're talking about Lycanroc. Um, mm -hmm. and, I mean, I'm surprised I'm surprised Zoroark and Yamper. Lucario got left out. Well, yeah. Z Z Zoroark's not in the game, but um, it, it, it's, it's very interesting. Yamper, I don't, we don't need Boltoned to get, to, to, to get a, 
<laughs> we don't need that. Let's let's stop. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you can do a lot to fix Paulton's design. Let's be fair. I was I was uh, I was watching a video by Birdkeeper Toby from back in like it was either January or December, and he was com- <laughs> he was complaining about like he wasn't complaining about the national like the cut itself. He was complaining about the choices. Right. Mm. He's just like, why do we have a metric? Uh, why do we have a metric when we have Yamper? Right. And, and stuff right. like that. Like he he made he makes like twenty comparisons like that. He's just like, mm-hmm. why do we have Conkolder and Machamp? Why do we have Gothitelle and Gardevoir? Yeah, it, it's just uh, I'm like, you're making a lot of very good points. Because he's just like these are just slots you could fill with something else. I'm just like you're you're demonstrating the reason why I thought this was a bad idea. <laughs> We're pointing it out. I didn't realize Mr. Rhyme was called the comedian Pokemon, by the way, until just now. Huh. He makes no sense. It's fine. What is going on there? It's fine. He's called the comedian Pokemon. He's the great mystery. The great mystery. Uh, but I think you could, I mean, you could do a lot of cool things with Gen 4. Like, I think Obama Snow, I mean, anything they got a Mega beforehand, I would like to see get a Gigantamax form. I think that would be really cool, actually. That would, that would be like some really cool lore. I mean, part of me wants Megas to come back, so I don't really care if the guys who have Megas get Gigantamaxes. Yeah, that's true. So it's like, that wouldn't be too exciting, but if, I'm just if surprised Megas, that If with Megas aren't ability. coming back, I would like them to get G-Maxes, just out of that, like, that's respect. Fair. Right. Like Drapion's in the game. Drapion would be a really cool candidate, too. I, I think there's a lot of cool Gen 4 Pokemon that just got overlooked. Yeah, and I wish they would have, um, like, big deep into the Guxela aspect yeah. of it, right? Mm-hmm. And giving us these much more memorable monsters, and uh, I don't know. Is anybody else surprised that Tyranitar didn't get one? Like, that uh, right? Tyranitar's yeah. like a 100% perfect example of like, yeah, you should get a G-Max form. Yeah, because that's that's exactly what I was, I thought that they were going for when I saw the Gigantamax for the first time. It's, oh, they're going for the Japanese tr- uh, uh, of giant monsters. I'm very upset Kingler got one and right. Tyranitar did Kingler not. did not deserve one. Uh, and his doesn't make sense comparatively. It's like, oh, yeah, we double speed drop on your opponent. Sure, whatever. That's that's a Kingdra thing to do. They were just looking for things to do, okay? Right. Because, yeah. I mean, Dynamax is a really cool thing on its own. Like, I think Dynamax mm-hmm. is, is very fun in the formats that they think you should be playing in. Mm-hmm. Not any formats that anybody wants to play in, but... The ones that they want you to play in. <laughs> I don't even know if it's that fun in uh, doubles, so. Well, I mean, yeah. It, yeah, uh, I couldn't believe it. I One of our listeners, I believe it was uh, Trevor. Uh, it was one of the people named Trevor. I forget which one. <laughs> there's a couple. On the official Pokemon.com website, mm-hmm. there's a thing about using Corviknight in 6v6 battles. At, like, and how to use them. Like, it's like a competitive, like, here's some big Pokemon and how to use them type thing hmm. for a sword and shield and it talks about using Corviknight in 6v6 battles we're all very aware like that's just not possible like mm-hmm. it's, it's just physically impossible to do on the cartridge because they give you a 20 minute timer <laughs> all right I keep forgetting about the timer the timer is the biggest issue Ti- like timer i think is if dexit doesn't kill people's enjoyment of the game timer will hmm <laughs> Like, I think that's kind of where I stood, because, like, a lot of the people are just like, oh, this is going to be really good for the meta. And by the meta, they meant OU meta. <laughs> um, it, the the answer is, well, Sword and Shield said you can't play that way anyway. So right. who cares? Mm-hmm. It's a very frustrating experience. It's fine. They could also give Sir Fetched an evolu- uh, a Gigantamax. I'd be okay with that. I'd be okay with them giving regionals Gigantamaxes. Well, since we're doing the whole, a hey, Gigantamax don't necessarily need to be giant, since we saw that in Tilion, uh, it becomes a sniper. He's still big and a sniper. Oh, it's still big? Yeah. Oh, okay. I mean, he's very tall. He's all tall. Yeah. yeah. But I would love, like, a fortress for, for, for Sirfetch. Like, he is he in just, the top he, of a tower. It's just more leaves. It's just, or it's just, like, a bunch more leaks, and it's, it's around him. And then, like, yeah. a little draw bridge, bridge drops, and he, like, <laughs> runs out. I just wish I wish Surfest was better. Have him ride on a rapid. Yeah, have him ride on too. a rapid. That he was one of the more the biggest hype for me. From and he still is. I love him. I love his design. He's fun to play with in the game. He's just not good. Which oh, come on, he's he comes. No, from he's Star okay. Fetch, so he's okay. We shouldn't we shouldn't have been so optimistic. <laughs> Farfetched itself, like like not not Galarian Farfetched, but like regular Farfetched, is actually not mm-hmm. terrible. 
Hmm. It's not a terrible Pokemon. It's not good, but it's not terrible. Like right. Farfetch has a really deep move pool. And mm-hmm. I think actually Gal- non Galarian Farfetch, I think, actually has a speed stat. No, I lied. Um, no, they have like the same stat. They do not have a speed stat. I lied. But his attack stat's not bad. Um, he got he got like a major boost in Gen uh, Gen Seven because like you know how they go around they like fiddle with stats when f- mm-hmm. in between generations yeah they yeah, gave yeah. Him, like they extra, like thirty attack they gave him an extra like twenty five attack points in Gen Seven and in Gen oh, Seven wow. he, he wasn't bad I mean he, he went from like a base sixty five attack to a base ninety attack so like in mm-hmm. PU or something he's not bad uh, he I think mm-hmm. he actually got kicked out of PU I think he's been in NU I was gonna say technically Galarian Farfetch should be in Little Cup. Uh, yeah, that's true. Galarian well, that Farfetch probably shouldn't be, but he is. The problem with Galarian Farfetch'd is he has almost the same exact stats as regular Farfetch'd, except they took five points out of speed and put them in attack. <laughs> He's gonna hit hard. <laughs> so they took it. They took like his. Uh, they took like it's a fifty-five base speed, and they threw it into attack. So he's ninety-five base attack, which is crazy high. Yeah, for right. like yeah. If you're gonna play Little Cup, like for Little Cup, that's crazy. That's Abra levels of like special attack. To yeah, attack and issues. Abra's crazy mm-hmm. <laughs> in Little Cup. So take that for what you what it's worth. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean Farfetch isn't terrible though. He is like a really deep move pool. I really wish Surfetch was better though. Mm, yeah, um, or don't we all? Do you think uh, Galarian Slowbro should get one? Ooh, Galarian! Sl- I I just want to know what Galarian Slowbro looks like. I want to know what's on his tail. Yeah, like we know it's something new, but what? Yeah, is it like Toxapex grabbed his tail instead of a instead of a shelter? Like that's what or I. Or is it know. like uh, Aracuda is another option? Aracuda, Aracuda. You know what? In terms of Gen Eight, yes. And he becomes super fast. Well, it doesn't. You don't. You don't change. You don't change your stats when you G Max. Remember, G Max is boring. No, no. But I'm talking about the normal evolution of Slowbro with the Barracuda oh. in its tail with a tur with the little <laughs> tur uh, what do you call it the <laughs> propeller and then it's just a fast Slowbro just from just from like the the pictures like the silhouettes we've seen of the two like in that like quick shot I really think mm-hmm. it's a Toxapex it just looks like it's going to be Toxapex it feels crapping. like it's going to be poison I kind of hope they differentiate the types between them this time I yes hope. that'd be cool if Slowking and Slowbro were different I'd be into it uh, I, I think they need that, especially yeah. since one of them got a Mega and the other one didn't. It's still, right. Oh, I that. forgot Mega Slowbro was a Pokemon. Right? We get a regional variant for a Pokemon that has a Mega. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's interesting. Uh, yeah. That's re- that's I, interesting. That does break the rule. That does break the rule. Mm-hmm. It's not, I don't even know if it matters at this point, to be honest. No, Just, I'm not sure it does either. Uh, because I, you can still they they work their way around it, like saying like, oh, you can just still bring in like a previous version of that or something like that. Mm-hmm. And even even with like even with something like uh, Slowbro, they made it so that Slowpoke was also a regional. So if you were to breed, yeah. you could still breed like a you can a still Cantonian's. breed the Slowpokes and get yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, and so, nice. So and the only I think the only things that are really issues right now are Alolan Marowak and Alolan Raichu in terms of obtainability in Gen Eight. Also. Canto Weezing. Uh Canto Weezing, yes, that's the other one. I'm sure they'll come up with ways to to get around it if they if they really care. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure which Weezing's actually better, but I don't know. They I feel like they both have like their pros and cons. But I feel like Isle of Armor should let you evolve things into a lowland forms. Like that a nice part of the Isle of Armor. Yeah. I, it's tropical. I, I mean, I'm hoping with like a lot of like you see some of the Alolan Pokemon coming back, like Lycanroc. That'd be cool. Lycanroc mm-hmm. should get a G Max, by the way. That'd be really cool. Like two, one mm-hmm. for each form. Three. You, there, there's. Oh, there's I three. Agree. That's yeah. right. You can make it like Flapple though, or Flapple and Flapple and uh, Appleton, and just make it the same one. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I could see that. Yeah, different effect. I think that would be the best. I mean, not the best. It would be the most realistic. Just give it its Z move ability back of destroying terrains. Yeah. I mean, honestly, just making moves Z, like their G Max moves Z moves makes sense to me. I I think that would be fine, and that's actually not a terrible move to give it either. Like Corviknight, Corviknight, like G Max Corviknight even has a niche in like hazard removal. Mm-hmm. It gets rid of Lapras's screens. That's yeah. cute. The downside is it gets rid of Airstream, but you know it gets rid of your screens. Yeah. <laughs> no, it gets rid of it, Max Airstream as an attack option. Oh yeah, yeah, you lose that, but you're Corviknight, like. <laughs> 
I think it's more important in doubles to get the speed boost for your partner. But yeah, yeah. There, I mean, there's a lot of I, like I said, there's a lot of candidates. I think I think Gen Four really. I just want some Gen Four love. It just hasn't happened. Cricketune. It's still bad, but you know. Do the loop. Do the loop. Luxray. There you go. Luxray. Luxray. With- Luxray and Magnezone, both of those. Magnezone with a giant something orbiting around it. Magnezone needs a lot more help. I think that's a fantastic option. You know what? We're coming up with like these ideas too. And like, I wouldn't be surprised if Isle of Armor gave us Venusaur and Blastoise and Urshifu and was just like, this is it. I have to imagine they're going to give us a, a couple more. I do too. <laughs> I, I think they need to give you a couple for the rivals, like a Dust Ox and maybe an Alakazam or something. Something boring? Yeah, okay. <laughs> I mean, Gengar got one again. Like, yeah, Gengar got one. What's up with that? How many Gengar forms do we need, Nintendo? Gengar is in the same line as Charizard. They're just the faves. They, they are. They gotta keep the good shiny in somehow, right? They're, uh. they're the, pre- the, the, how you call it? The preferred, chi- the preferred child. <laughs> <laughs> Mother did always like you best. Yeah, uh, mother did always like Charizard and Gengar a lot. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. I'm into it. Uh, yeah, but I think this is a good place to wrap it up. It, it turned into far more than I thought it would turn into. So, <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a break here, guys. We're going to have somebody yell at you about ramen. And we're going to take it on over to the Pokemon of the episode. We'll catch you on the flip-flop. Hey guys, Seth Philo cutting in to tell you about something awesome that I've been absolutely loving, Vite Ramen. If you guys know me, you know I have a borderline noodle addiction, and part of that love has always been a guilty pleasure for ramen. Well, Vite Ramen is ramen, but get this, it's actually good for you. You heard me right. The guys at Vite Ramen have spent years making ramen that's nutritionally complete, and I absolutely adore it. Each bowl has 30 grams of protein, which is more than your average protein shake, 7 grams of fiber, all 27 key vitamins and minerals that you need, and most importantly, tons of awesome flavor. Oh yeah, and did I mention it still only takes four minutes to prepare? It's basically still instant ramen. You can head over to VitRamen.com and pick up soy sauce chicken, garlic pork, and my favorite, vegan miso flavors, as well as handy utensils and other such stuff. And here is the coolest part. At checkout, enter code PUCKLE and you'll get 10% off your entire order. That's P-U-C-L, all caps, for a whopping 10% off. Anyway, I gotta get back to rating, and you've got a show to finish. Catch you guys on the flip-flop. Poke of the episode. And welcome to the Pokemon of the episode. Our Pokemon of the episode this week is National Dex number... 324. Torkoal, the coal Pokemon. This is where you read it, Yushiro. Ooh, right. (laughs) (laughs) You find abandoned coal mines full of them. They dig tirelessly in search of coal. This is based on the shield Pokedex. Uh, So Torkoal is a Pokemon. The only reason it's really good is because it's stupid bulky. Because it's 140 defense. (laughs) (laughs) It's special attack and attack stats aren't bad at base 85 for both. Mm It's stupid slow though at base 20. Uh, however, in Gen 7, they gave it Drought. And and that's why it's good. That's when it became good. Yep. Uh, I would say it became a nice B-. minus. Mm-hmm. It, it, it went from a D to a B-, minus because it got Drought. <laughs> <laughs> Weather makes everything better. <laughs> yes, it just made it better. So, Drought Torkoal, amazing. So, the team we have today is for Battle Spot Singles. Uh, we have a Torkoal in it. It is very weird Torkoal. I am going to let... Sigma tell you about it, though, because Sigma is going to know infinitely more about it than I am. All right. So first off, we got this Torkoal. It's got its drought and its item is eject pack, which is a fun new item added in Gen 8, which makes it so when your stats get lowered, it switches out. (laughs) So it's essentially a U-turn when it runs overheat, which it does. (laughs) Oh, that's crazy. That's really good. I didn't think about that. Yeah, which lets you get into a Pokemon to abuse it, like a Charizard that's on this team later. Or like if you're running Venusaur, that can work out well This team for you. sounds so much fun now. Yeah, it does. Yeah, a Jack Pack is just kind of a little fun item for Torkoal. I, I'm i going to do this now. I need to get Master Ball rank anyway in BSS this month. So There yeah. we go. I'm going to train Torkoal for sure. Mm-hmm. You can just plug this in. You don't even need to train it, Shiro. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah you just pl- plug in the little code. Plug in the code number. Huh. 
Fun fact, you can use this whole team like it's yours. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, but yeah, it's running max HP and mostly spadef focused, but with a little bit of defense as well. It's got overheat, stealth rocks, yawn, and a fissure for when you just need to kill something. I'm very surprised by the stealth rocks. I'm not going to lie. I, I guess it's, hmm. I guess it, maybe I shouldn't be because Charizard's so prevalent still. Mm -hmm. yeah. Even in BSS, more so than it was in BSS in the past. Breaking Excadrill sashes are important too. Yes, yeah. So, uh, Stealth Rock has its uses in Battle Spot singles. Uh, and the next Pokemon is Snorlax with Thick Fat and Leftovers, so probably not a G Max. I haven't actually checked, but there's no I don't think this is a good Snorlax. I'm going to disagree with this Snorlax on a lot of levels. It's a very stally Snorlax because it has Yawn Protect, which is what a lot of Snorlaxes do. If they're not offensive, yeah. is they yawn, they protect, the opponent either has to switch out or go to sleep, and then you can either spam heavy slam or fissure until it dies. <laughs> I don't like I don't like any of this. <laughs> uh if they go to sleep, you could also switch out to like your Charizard and set up. Yeah. So yeah, it's it's a max HP, max defense, if you're wondering what its EV focus is. Yeah. Uh so Jashira, tell us about uh Mimikyu. Good old Mimikyu. Uh, this one has the disguise, obviously. It's the standard uh, ability for I it. I don't think it has another ability. Exactly. Nope. You wouldn't run it either way. Life Orb is what you want to add to it. And that will give it the extra own for Play Rough and Phantom Force. Then you have the Sword Stance for the extra attack and Shadow Sneak for that priority attack. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, a Phantom Force is really nice for when you go big as well. Or what? When you go big or when they go big, because it stalls yeah. a turn. Yeah, yeah, it stalls a turn. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Charizard or Jishiro. Charizard, that's favorite Pokemon right now. It's it's everybody's favorite. I feel like <laughs> I, I'm not the only person, by the way. There's so many. Oh people no, I am annoyed with Charizard, and I'm the happiest Colokius fan of Pokemon, and I am tired of Charizard. I feel like everybody's tired. Yeah. Solar power would be the uh, ability on this Charizard alongside with the ability charcoal to give it that extra fire damage. It, it included with flamethrower, air slash, blast burn, and work up. Work up's really Probably nice. Probably Gigantamax. Probably Gigantamax. It's definitely, it's definitely for G-Max because they're definitely like... We have Torkoal to set the sun for it, so yes. it doesn't need to set the sun itself. It's a G Max. Yeah, it's a G Max. It's just a G Max Charizard. Uh, I mean, that's fine. I mean, G Max Charizard's not bad. No, mm -hmm. it's very good. The one eighth of damage each turn it adds up. Yeah. So the other two members that are going to round this out are Ferrothorn. Uh, and this is not a standard Battle Spot Singles Ferrothorn at all. No, not at all. <laughs> this is a Focus Sash Ferrothorn with Gyro Ball, Knock Off, Leech Seed, and Stealth Rock. That honestly, if I didn't know any better, I would swear we were playing singles without a focus sash. I mean, to be fair, again, Charizard's super prevalent, so like, I guess mm -hmm. I get the focus sash. Mm -hmm. You're setting the sun too, so you're like upping yeah. the likelihood you die. Yeah. So, but getting your own rocks up in some extent uh, again is nice. Uh, knockoff is really good. Uh, just in general, I'm glad that they limited the number of Pokemon that could run it in these formats. Yeah, uh, mm -hmm. because knockoff was kind of getting ridiculous when it was a move tutor move. Uh, it's super dumb this gen because there's no item to keep on a Pokemon to stop yeah. it from being knocked off too. Yeah, that's true. But I mean, you could just, I guess, not run an item. I don't know. Um, <laughs> exactly. You, you don't have to run an item. Like it always gets an item, and that's what's annoying about it this gen. I I'm okay with that. I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm okay. I'm okay with that because there's such a limited number of knockoff yeah. users. If it was prevalent, it would be annoying. Yes. Uh, I mean, I don't think anything, like, really good has knockoff anymore. Um, uh, maybe, maybe like, Weavile, but I don't think anything, like, crazy good has it. I don't think Weavile has it. I think it has the throat chop. Yeah. Excadrill is the other member that rounds itself. This is Choice Scarf Excadrill. This is probably meant to be a finisher if you're not running Charizard in that battle. <laughs> Um, because it's Choice Scarf Excadrill. Make sure you can go first if you're in a scenario, but it looks like you're supposed to go big with it. Um, you have, uh, Earth, you, I don't know. It's, it's a very, it's, it's a lot of utility. It works either way. It works either way. You have earthquake, iron head, brick break and sleep talk. Just so if you get yawned out, you don't actually get yawned out. You can just sleep talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You can go to sleep and feel free to come back later. Yeah. It'll be a good time. 
it, it it works out. It makes it so your X control doesn't get like too screwed over. Uh, this is an interesting team, though. I like I said, it, I I don't want to run it, uh, especially now knowing what the jet pack does. I forgot about that because they like they added some items, but they're definitely like very single specific items. Uh, some of them are doubles, like the room time or whatever. That's it is, true. Room That's service. True. That was that was a dumb item, but they added it. There's a lot of <laughs> well, they have dumb items. Like remember ring target. Ring mm-hmm. target's an item. Okay. <laughs> so. I, I think there's a lot of dumb items in Pokemon. I'll be completely honest with you. Uh, they like it's like hit and misses, but I think it's because they just like they like. Uh, I don't know if Pokemon does this on purpose, but it's really just good game design. I it's where the players can figure out how to break the game with the things that they're given. Yeah, and I don't mm-hmm. know that for sure that Pokemon enjoys when that happens or not. I don't know if they like it when people like uh, figure out, oh hey, this is really good to use like this. I think they get mad sometimes. <laughs> Of course, but mm. it's uh, it, uh, it's interesting. They they have a lot of hit and miss items that you can try to play around and like do interesting strategies with. It, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. Uh, heavy duty boots are an item that would have been really good once upon a time. But yeah, on that note though, uh, I think there's a good place to stop. If you want to use this team, it'll be in the Discord server, uh, so you guys can grab the rental code and just throw it in your game and have some battle spot singles fun. On that note, though, we are going to go ahead and shift gears, and we're going to kick it on over to the mailbag. It's mail time! Send in your emails! Mail! And welcome to the mailbag. The mailbag, as always, is brought to you by the energy drink Green Tauros, the energy drink that gives you hooves. Hooves! Oops. This is also the segment where we give, uh, where we read listener emails. You send them into pucklepodcast.gmail.com and we read them. And boy, did you send them in this week. <laughs> uh, we, we've had like so many weeks in a row where it's just like nobody sent emails in. And then this week it was like everybody, everybody's got a favorite type because we give you a prompt every week. We ask you what your favorite type is and why. And man, did you all send it. So we're only going to get to three of these emails today. If your email is not read on the show, it will be in the unread email section of the server on Discord. So definitely go and check them out there. There's more emails, more goodness to get over there. We really do appreciate everybody who sent in the emails. And we do want to let you know we read all of them. Uh, so we thank you, all of you, for your kind words that you put in there. But we can only read so many because I only have so much time uh, before my wife gets home from work. <laughs> so here we go. Our first email this week is going to be from Polywo. Hi, Thatch and guys. Polywo here. Hi, Polywo. Hi, Polywo. Hi. First time writing in and wanted to say I am loving this podcast. Started started on the run up to Sword and Shield and now look forward to it every week. You're in the minority. Um, <laughs> my- <laughs> <laughs> There's so many things where it's just like Thatch is the most depressing person ever. I hate the show. Which is fair. That's a fair review of 2019 Puckle. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> they, like, <laughs> they didn't start at the beginning, though. So that's good. Yeah. My favorite type is uh, is fighting as it contains my favorite Pokemon, Polyrath, Heracross, and Toxicroak. For gyms, instead of using one type, I always thought that they could, u- they could use varied types centered around the theme like an occupation. Maybe like builders using rock, street, and f- steel, and fighting. Or huh. a certain place. Circus with fire yeah. breathers, clowns, tamer act. With would you mean couldn't bring OP Pokemon to sweep as easily? What do you think? I'm so okay with that. Like I'm yeah, one hundred percent. I really okay. like that idea. I I was talking about it last. This is for so for reference. I had like a little bit in the last show where I was mm-hmm. talking about how I would really like to see gyms turn away from just pure type advantage. Monotyping, yeah. Because mm-hmm. I I think it's boring, and if you really want to shake it up, I think this is the coolest way to do it. You give like gyms themes, and you could teach you could um teach different aspects of Pokemon, and they kind of went that like. For everything, like, okay, so I'm going to say something. Get ready, guys. I want this on the record so that nobody can tell me this anymore. This is something positive about Pokemon Sword and Shield. (laughs) (laughs) Pokemon Sword and Shield steered away from this with Raihan. And I think it is Mm. the most innovative thing that they could have done in Pokemon. Very well done, Jim. I thought it was very well done. They did a different battles type. They showed you different strategies in Pokemon on top of that. He said he was the dragon gym leader, but then has a Sandaconda and a Gigalith. So yeah. um, he's not really a dragon type gym leader. He He's more of a sand setting gym leader, which I think is very cool. Yeah. He's a weather gym leader because I think he changes his weather type for the uh, Elite Four match too. Yeah. I think it's very, very cool and I really like it. Um, so just 
just saying like i think that's a really cool concept of like hey you have a weather gym right yeah uh i mm-hmm. think that's something that is really missed out on and i would love to see that come back to some kind of fruition in, in some form because instead of saying like oh this is the grass gym oh well, let me go catch a fire type over there and i'll go beat him up uh yeah. I, I think it'd be really cool you well you have like one gym up front that teaches you about gym type advantages kind of like black and white did mm-hmm and then – so that's your type advantage gym. That's – that we've literally condensed eight gyms into one. Uh, <laughs> and then then it's just like this gym wants to poison you. This gym yeah. wants to paralyze you. You know, you do stuff like that. Right. Mm-hmm. I think it would be very interesting. And I, I mean they kind of used to do that with type because that's basically what types used to do. But now types are just so varied. Like you have Pokemon that play so many different roles in different types. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. so you can kind of get back to that to an extent. And I think it would be really cool. And it would honestly help you breed like more competitive Pokemon players. Yeah. I think it's just a really cool concept, but th- that's the reference. Um, but I think something like that's even better. Like honestly, anything that's different than like this is ice type is is a step in the right direction. I, I think anything like that's just a better step in that direction. Uh, thank you for being the best Pokemon podcast out there, and carry on the good work from Polywo. P.S. I love the trivia Discord page, and when is Game Corner coming out on Poco on Puckle Plus? I'm missing it. I do not know the answer to that ah, question. We're making, we're gonna make a few changes to Pokemon. We're Plus. working on Puckle Plus. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's in the things to do list. It's on, it's on the list. We have things going. Don't worry, Battlecast will still come out. Battlecast is coming month. though. <laughs> yeah, and TCG Cast will be returning next next month. Battlecast is the uh, is the Puckle Plus anchor right now, so it's, yeah. we're getting there. All right. So on that note, then, uh, we'll get to the next one. So thank you for that one, Polywo. Our next one is from, oh my gosh, let me see if I can say it. Arcana King. There we go. Greetings, Puckle Onions. Arcana King here. Did he really call them Puckle Onions? Is this, do you know Bo? <laughs> <laughs> that's how it's spelled. That, that's, if it was an A, I would say Puckle. It's Puckalonians. That's what it's supposed to be. Puckalonians, not Puckle Onions. <laughs> Well, okay, fine. We're we're going on. (laughs) This is my first time writing in, and I have an idea for a future episode. But first, a bit about me. I have never played a Pokemon game, but I really want to. My favorite Pokemon is Arcanine. I am shocked with the name. (laughs) I don't know if it's Arcana or if it's Arcanine. Like, I can't tell with the spelling. (laughs) But continue. The, The pronunciation guide says it's Arcana. So, and it has been for years. My favorite type is probably Ghost. I just think it has really cool Pokemon. Wouldn't it be cool to get Ghost type Arcanine? Boom. Mm. More Gen 1 regionals, please. That's. <laughs> we don't have enough. <laughs> I was going to say, Arcanine's, please, already, yes. like, Arcanine's already like one of the best Pokemon from Gen 1. I can't wait for another Meowth. It doesn't <laughs> need anything else, uh, but. Except that water type Arcanine that was rumored. I, I would. Would that would have been amazing. Anyways, my idea for a future episode is that there is a YouTuber called Shamtoshi Official, and he posted fan-made Pikmon regions. You could watch a few of them and re- then review the region. Your likes, dislikes, etc. Thanks for reading. Arcana King. We are not a reaction podcast. <laughs> also, we're going to have, like, content for a while with, hopefully, Isle of Armor here in a month, so... Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm, al- I'm also... I, I don't like just watching other people's content and then reviewing it, unless it brings up, like, a really good point. I've never been a fan of uh, fan art or fan in or anything fan-related. Don't get me wrong, I know there's incredibly great stuff out there, better than the original, but it's just never been something that calls to me. I, I don't disagree. Uh, all right, so I guess we can get, we get time for one more. One more, and from none other than Domobot. Domobot. Domo Origato, Mr. Roboto. Classic. Hey, Puckle Crew, here for the mailback to let you know you guys know what to let you guys know what my favorite Pokemon type is. Personally, my favorite type is poison. I love the versatility of the type itself, having Pokemon as fast and offensive as Gengar and defensively bulky Pokemon like Toxipax. And on the top of that, I've always been fascinated with poisonous animals. To me, the poison type just feels generally strategic and there is a lot of work with having so many variations of type combinations. I really like that the most poison types have a nice balance between being defensive and offensive, a good example being Crobat. 
Also, I love the designs of every po uh, poison type. There's not a single one that I dislike. Yes, I even like Muck and Grimer. What's not to love? Alolan Muck is great. Alolan Muck is really cool, actually, yeah. I love both of them. Uh, they generally my, my style. <laughs> you are going to go great with Basket here. <laughs> uh, being a little on the greedy side while still being cute and, or cool. And Hunter is definitely my favorite go poison type. Anyway, I'll end it here before I start rambling. Keep doing what y'all doing so well, and thanks for helping distract us from these crazy times. Domo bot. I appreciate it. Yeah, so that's yes. where we're going to end it today. I apologize in advance if we didn't get to your email. Just because we have so many, we had so many good emails this week, and we couldn't get to all of them. At least we have another easy prompt next week. So. Yeah, we do have another prompt mm -hmm. next week. So if your email didn't get read this week, and you really want us to read your email on the show, be sure to send your email into punklepodcast at gmail .com, letting us know what Pokemon you would like to see get a Gigantamax, and it'll be a good time. I will try to read as many as we can, uh, like we usually do each week. But thank you for that. Uh, also, try to send them in by uh, ten a.m. On Saturday, because that's when we record. <laughs> I, I want to. I just want to make that clear because, like, sometimes like people will be upset that we didn't read their emails, and it's like, well, you sent it at 9 p.m. on Sunday. The show comes out at midnight, so <laughs> I don't know when you thought we record it. But <laughs> so uh, definitely, definitely go ahead and send those emails into fucklepodcast at gmail dot com. <laughs> we we really do appreciate it. We like I mean like we said we do listen, read them all and we do pay attention to you guys and we really do thank you all for listening and participating. So yeah, like I said, pucklepodcast at gmail .com, What Pokemon do you want to see get a Gigantamax form? Write it into the email. If you want to keep up with Puckle throughout the week, well, there's a lot of ways to do that. First of all, you can join our Discord server and just hang out with us in general. Yeah. Two, you could follow us on social media over at Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. We love interacting with you guys and just having a good time. And then two, uh, we have more content coming out this week over on the YouTube channel at youtube.com slash puckle podcast. So be sure to head on over there where you can start watching our fire red Nuzlocke with Basket and myself, I believe, on the first episode. And I think he's also on the second. First one. two episodes, you got Basket. And then I think it switches to me. Yeah, it switches to you. For four episodes because we lost an episode. Which yeah, is sad. I got to sign myself up for that. Uh, yeah, well, we should definitely get you in. Uh, if you, I mean, we could talk and see if you have time this week and then we could just do, do a few this, uh, one evening. I just finished school on Wednesday. Perfect. So. You got all the time in the world. Let's yes. do it. Yes. Let's do it. Uh, yeah, we can do a few, we can do a few together. It sounds like a good time. And then it, I'm just, I'm very excited because we've got like, we've got a, a weeks of content for that planned and I'm very excited <laughs> for it. It's just a really cool like hangout session, and if you want to learn more about people and just how we interact, I think it's just a really good time. You should also go over to Twitch at twitch.tv slash the Puckle Podcast, where we have we, where we live stream. Uh, I've been playing a playthrough of Pokemon Coliseum over there, and we've been doing raid nights and a bunch of other fun stuff. So be sure to head out over there. Typically, typically Thursday nights are your definite go to. I'm working on a stream schedule so that we can get something a little bit more consistent. Uh, that's something that's working in the future. And then from there, if you want to help support the show in a variety of ways, one, you can take that Twitch Prime membership, if you have one, and subscribe to the channel. We That helps out the show, and it doesn't cost you anything more than you've already spent. You can also go ahead and check out our Tee Public store, buy some t-shirts over there. Anything you buy over there helps support the show. Go over to Vite Ramen, buy some tasty, tasty noodles. And I, their Szechuan ones are coming, I think, next month. Very excited about that. Uh, so you can go over there, use code PUCKLE at checkout for 10% off your order. And then finally, the most direct way to, to support the show is to go to our Patreon at patreon.com slash puckle podcast. Anything you do give over there is really appreciated. Also don't give if you can't. Right. Especially in these times. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially in these times. But if you want to go over there and we give away, we usually do some shiny Pokemon giveaways. We also do uh, offer a, a bot service that you guys can utilize to create whatever Pokemon you want uh, at the proper tier. We're working on some other events for that, and I think we're also going to do it so that uh, patrons get access to the YouTube videos early as well. It should be easy enough to do. Yeah. yeah, that should be easy enough to do. I think we'll do that. So if you want early access to the YouTube videos, get them a day early or so, you can go over there and go over to Patreon. Honestly, we should just make them all unlisted when we upload them and just give them to them as we finish editing them. <laughs> Let them binge it, you know? Yeah. Have the raw. 
The raw version. No, not the raw version. <laughs> no. <laughs> actually, I don't know what the difference between the raw and the edited version is. There actually isn't are. one right now. But, you know, there's going to be that one time where Thatch Lake makes a comment about something. <laughs> <laughs> but on that note, uh, I have been Trainer Thatch. Some say I've been Shiro. I've been R-Sigma. And here in the Lavender Town Radio Tower, it's closing time.